Hey, welcome everybody to the 40 Finance channel. We're obviously in a crazy volatile time right now for the stock market. And uh, most of us have seen our portfolios take a hit here lately. And the question is, of course, on everybody's mind is when does the bottom come in? How far down can some of this stuff go? Uh, so for this video, I'm doing the four horsemen of the stock apocalypse. These are kind of like four indicators that I'm looking for uh, to really try to get a feel for like how much further down, how much more negativity uh, will we see going forward. There are a lot of interesting aspects to the financial situation and the financial markets right now because of where the pandemic put us and a lot of people saved up money. And then you, of course, had a low interest rate, so a lot of money went into investments. And really, it's unlikely that all those factors are just going to cut off at a single point. But in my view, what we could see is just some general reallocation from one bucket of money to the other bucket of money. Uh, so looking for these indicators will give you at least some idea of when to feel comfortable to get in uh, maybe to your favorite stocks or maybe to other investments if you're interested in those as well. All right, so let's jump in and look at my four horsemen uh, that you want to be looking for in the stock apocalypse, let you know maybe when we're going to start to see a little bit of floor to this activity. All right, one of the things that I've been following a lot lately is just a few ETFs uh, to get a feel for where the weakness is. And it, this was on my live stream the other day where I talked about the importance of the SPY uh, and in particular the QQQ. These two ETFs represent the top holdings in the stock market. So you can't really call anything a crash uh, until you start to see some weakness there. And what I'm seeing for myself in the QQQ, which is one that I'm super interested uh, to build a large position in going forward, um, really, it's not at its bottom. And what I see with the QQQ, quite honestly, is something that's down, uh, but I wouldn't call it tanked by any stretch of the imagination. So um, I know you can't see the upper part of this chart, but we're at 382. The most recent peak that I have on this chart was an open at four, uh, 405 on 1122. Uh, it did close at 399 that day. But just eyeballing, this is year to date, just eyeballing the RSI down here at the bottom, you're at 32 right now, which isn't, you know, that's certainly a downward momentum. But if we look ahead or if we look backwards to September, you had numbers, if you can see that purple off to the left hand side, you had numbers in the 20s. And if we break the view down to a three month view, you're still at uh, about 33 here today, and you see the lows coming into late September, early October, 21, 23, 24, and 22. So I would argue, looking at the QQQ, uh, that, oh, by the way, is just now coming down to its 50-day moving average, there's probably some still some room to run on this one. Switching over here to just the top 10 holdings, looking for who might be overvalued. And just my personal opinion, I would say Tesla and NVIDIA. Um, I'm a PayPal holder. It wouldn't surprise me if that one has a little bit uh, more to leak out before you got to a truly historically fair valuation. And even at the top, you're gonna get some arguments with Apple Microsoft and Amazon, not that they're wildly overvalued, but you know, I think most people would agree if you saw a five to 10% dip on any of these names here, it wouldn't exactly surprise you. Now I'm going to flip over to the spy. And you know, the difference here to me with all of the media and everybody talking about stocks going down and whatnot, you know, there, there's a huge difference between fair value and stocks being on sale right now. So if we look at the SPY, RSI, this is what, three month chart? I'll give it a one month just for fun. One month chart, you're at 35 on the RSI. That looks like the low, uh, no, there was a low on 1126 of 28 on the RSI. 
And you can see really with the SPY, I mean, you're at the 50-day moving average. I don't think anybody would stand up in a room and cheer and say that this thing is massively on sale. Perhaps there's an argument that it's coming down to a reasonable valuation of some kind. But generally speaking, uh, I would say that there's probably still some more room to run. So whether it's QQQ uh, or SPY, whichever one you follow the most, if you're using that as one of the four horsemen, I would say probably still some more room to run down. All right, the next of the four horsemen that I would be looking at in terms of individual stocks, it's going to be the concept of declining earnings growth percentage. Okay, that's a lot of words, but basically the pace of growth slowing is going to limit the upside of the stocks that you're looking at. So I've got Square here as an example, and there's dozens and dozens of others. But if you're just on Yahoo and you look at the analysis tab and you look at Square, regardless of what you think about the valuation of Square, uh, you can see last year's EPS was 84 cents. This year, the projection, basically they're going to add um, 100% to that number, right? As long as they hit this. Next year though, you're going from a buck 70 to a projection of only 16 cents more. So when you go from, let's call it a 100% increase in EPS, and then next year you're looking at a 10% increase in EPS, then that is slowing uh, EPS growth. Now, let's talk about revenue because there's a lot of these uh, growth stocks that most people are just gonna focus on the revenue. And we know that a calculation like that can be very volatile, particularly if you do not have earnings. So this year, Square plus 85%, going from nine and a half billion last year to an estimate of about 18 billion. Then next year though, look at this number, 7.8%, so single digits. And you will hear for some stock analysts, they'll say that you, know, you take revenue growth percentage looking forward and you divide it by two and that should be about your price to sales. Well, if you follow that metric, I, I use it as kind of a yardstick, but I don't really get down in the nitty gritty. Uh, with Square, you've got eight, let's just call it 8%, right? So half of 8% should be a 4x price to sales. Let's see where Square is at this year. Let me just look over here at statistics. You got price to sales, 6.23. So that just says to me that potentially Square has room to go back down. While we're here, we can also look at things like PEG ratio and forward PE, and then look back through history and try to get a feel for where Square was trading. Right now for Square, I would argue that it's as cheap as it's been lately, but it's always been one that's traded above a sort of standard valuation metrics. So get into your stocks and understand at least what the projections are understand how much they grew last year, okay? Then how much are they growing this year, assuming that they run on a calendar year fiscal schedule, right? So they grew X in 2020, right? What are they gonna grow in 2021? And then what's the projection for 2022? And if you keep seeing things lopped off 50%, 70%, 80%, in terms of the percentage of growth at both the top and bottom line, then you could have a problem on your hands if there's not enough earnings to support the price of the stock you're interested in. All right, next up as the third horseman of the stock apocalypse, you want to watch out for earnings, okay? Earnings equals profitability at the end of the day. When you hear people say the top line, they're talking about revenue, okay? What does that trickle down to? That trickles down to the bottom line, which is essentially profits, which is earnings per share. So the thing that's great about earnings per share, if you're a fundamental investor, is nine times out of 10, it offers a floor. And what I mean by a floor is how far a stock price could fall. Because basically, when you have earnings 
and you have competition, let's just say uh, you're an airline, right? And you have a certain level of earnings and there's gonna be a general multiple that people will pay a price to earnings uh, for the airlines category, right? And the airlines that get the most earnings times the multiple, their stock is gonna be worth the most amount of money. But either way, if you're producing earnings, you have a case for your stock that it can only go down so far and or the future can only get better assuming the company is growing that earnings. So for this example here where things get risky is when you have no earnings, okay? So that's what we have here with Cloudflare, which is kind of a darling uh, of the growth stock period during the pandemic. And for good reason, this company, I'm, I'm intrigued by this company. I would actually buy this stock based on the business. But what I struggle for with Cloudflare in the short term is that there's no level of support from earnings, right? So last year, they had minus 12 cents, so basically not profitable. This year, they've cut that in half, which is outstanding. Uh, they should get to minus 5 cents. Next year, depending on uh, which analyst you pick, you could get to profitability at 1 cent. Now, when you're in a high growth name like this, and by high growth, you see down here, plus 36% projected for next year, which is great. Keep in mind though, uh, that pace is slowing uh, from what they saw this year, what they're projected to see this year. But skip that for a second and let's focus on earnings. If you're in a high growth name, which is basically gonna be about more than 25% uh, revenue growth per year and sort of expected to maintain that level for three to five years. For stocks like these right now, uh, my sort of minimum entry is a forward PE of 100. So if we took that on Cloudflare in this particular environment where we are just in an absolute free-for-all, you've got to get to a forward PE of 100 for me. So for me personally in this one, at you know one cent profitability next year which by the way could go either way a forward pe of a hundred on that would actually just be a single dollar so if you're going to use that math you would say the forward pe is about a thousand uh, for cloudflare to be worth a hundred dollars uh, obviously the company is worth more than that here uh, but what I'm trying to do in this time when things are coming down and you're looking for stocks to buy that maybe have a floor that you can count on, right now a company like Cloudflare, who I think will go on to do great things, is not even on the radar uh, here as a possibility. All right, the fourth horseman doesn't even really have anything to do with stocks, but it's just taking the pulse of other markets that have seen inflated values to get a feel of how far they're trickling down. Uh, so for me, I follow the sports card market a little bit, have a couple cards of my own that I've invested in, and uh, you can go to this website that most card collectors are gonna be familiar with, PSA, and you can look at auction price history for some of the cards. Um, and this one is just an everyday uh, Mike Trout rookie card. Gem Mint 10, there's a bazillion of these out there. I chose this one because it has a pretty solid auction history. If you scroll all the way down, this market has went up and a little bit down, and then it peaked right about the same time that the stock market peaked in February. And now you're starting to see some things trickle down. Uh, we're basically at the level that we were in roughly uh, January or so. Looking at other collectibles assets uh, is another good idea to get a feel for where those are going. This is coin market cap, which of course is crypto. And crypto historically has had some ties with the stock market. Uh, these are the coins that I watch. And, uh, you know, you kind of eyeball the seven day chart. So far, we haven't seen a ton of weakness in what some people would call a very speculative market uh, that's hard to evaluate 
uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana all look to be holding their own. They're down a little bit today, uh, but it'll be interesting to see as time goes on, right? If people lose a lot of money in the stock market, then they're going to be looking for their collectibles uh, and other asset purchases, perhaps, to make up the gap. So if you think about the fact that if you got rich, uh, let's say on AMC stock, right, and you wanted to, ver to diversify a little bit, maybe you bought some crypto, maybe you bought some baseball cards, some art, whatever it is that you are interested in, uh, if AMC or any stock like it were to dip back to zero and you were bag holding, uh, you probably sell, tax loss harvest some of it, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, this kind of lifestyle or some of the things maybe you bought because you got rich off the stock market, that's going to creep up on you. You're probably going to start looking at that Mike Trout card or maybe some of your Bitcoin holdings to cash out there while they still hold value. All right, guys, so those are my four horsemen that I'm looking for to project the stock market apocalypse, if indeed it even happens. I'm trying to take note of big ETFs like QQQ and SPY, get a feel for how weak they really are. Uh, we're looking at earnings and EPS growth. Top and bottom line are the percentages of growth declining. Uh, looking ahead, and if so, the top for our stocks that have that declining percentage, the top becomes more limited and the floor starts to open up more. Third, of course, we talked about earnings. If you don't have earnings in the stocks that you're in, uh, you're always gonna be at risk, right? Because earnings, profitability, is always going to offer a floor of some kind. It doesn't mean your stock can't go down but there is a floor when you have a profitable company. And finally, I bring up the other assets idea, follow some different markets that have assets depending on what you're interested in. You know, I uh, like the sports card market. I like to follow it. I'm not a huge investor there. There's plenty of other people who like uh, coins, art. There's so many collectibles. You could probably just go on eBay and pick one. Get a feel for how those prices are going in those collectible markets or follow the crypto market or something there like it. Uh, keep a close eye on because as people start to lose money in stocks, things that they paid maybe up for, uh, like the Mike Trout card, they might start eyeing that card and say, you know what, I better lock in this gain while I still can. And when you see those markets start to slip, uh, generally speaking, I would say that's bad news uh, for the stock market because it just means people are cashing out. And that, of course, brings uh, prices down. For me, anyway, as a long-term investor, and, and I'm not going anywhere for a little while, uh, I'm just looking for, you know, how far down are we going to go because I can't wait uh, to buy a few things for the long term. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you did. We'll see you on the next one.